Hello, my name is Fabiola Gaines and I'm the Director of Nutrition for Ebony Nutrition Consultants. I am a registered dietitian and I want to tell you all about the virtual grocery store tour we're going to do in a few minutes. But before we get started with that, I want to talk to you about our nutrition fact label. The USDA has come out with a nutrition fact label that we're using during the course of our virtual grocery store tour. And we will have copies of the nutrition fact label reading on the website at the end of the virtual tour for you to download and take a look at what we're, we're going to be talking about. We have a new label as of this year. And one of the things that have come out with the new label, the calories are up close and personal with us now, as opposed to the old label. We sort of had to search for the calories, but now they're real prominent on our labels. So that's one of the facts that we want to point out with our new label. Also, what you'll find on our website is how you can save money at the grocery store. It has 10 items that we want you to look at how to save when you shop at the grocery store. Another thing we want to emphasize is buying produce in season because the prices are cheaper and you get a better buy whenever you eat your produce in season. So, Let's get started with our virtual tour. We are just so excited to give you a virtual grocery store tour. One of the things I want to emphasize to all the parents out there is to leave your children home when you go to the grocery store. Because we always know that children increase our grocery bill at least by $50. Also, one of the other tricks I'd like to suggest for you to do is to never go to the grocery store hungry. If you've ever done it, you know that we just buy things that we really don't need. Also, when you're looking at produce, we want, we want to purchase produce that is in season. So one of the things that we often say when we go to the grocery store as, as nutritionists, you always shop the perimeter of the grocery store because that is where you find a lot of the healthier foods. Nowadays, grocery stores have gotten smart. They're putting the delis, they're putting the bakeries, they're putting the coffee shops, all on the perimeter of the grocery store. So that theory is busted as of now. But there are healthy choices that we're gonna go through this tour to point out to all of you what you need to do. Now, I wanna start with the produce section. In that section, we have all different kinds of produce, and I have some small examples of what I want to stress to you today. One of the things that we often see are the bag lettuces. If any of you have purchased the bag lettuce, you know what happens with that lettuce after one or two days. We can't use it, it goes bad. This bag of lettuce was $2.69. And as we look at the label on the back, it only feeds two people. But we do have a healthier choice and, and a better choice, which is our romaine lettuce, which is $2.69. And we can feed up to six people with this. So this is the choice we like for you to purchase as opposed to the bag lettuces. Also, when we look at fruit, it is real convenient to purchase the beautiful fruit in these containers. It just, oh, especially the watermelon, the cantaloupe, the honeydew. We look at that and say, oh, I don't have to cut it. I don't have to do nothing to it, but open the top. This container was $3. And I'm going to tell you, it's maybe a cup, a cup of fruit in this. $3. Whereas this whole cantaloupe was $3. And you can feed a family of four to six with this cantaloupe. So the, the best choice for our, uh, our fruit is to buy the melons whole and cut them up yourself. We also know that right now we're in strawberry season. Strawberries are very inexpensive. And of course, our bananas are the staple in the house. 
So, look at whole fruit. Look at our lettuce that's not cut up and purchase those things that be good for our families and good for our budget. Now, as we talk about vegetables, I often bring up canned goods because some of us do not have the refrigeration space to have the fresh produce. Canned produce is okay. I have some examples of the canned produce here that we have some corn. We have corn here that has no salt and we have corn with salt. And as we look at the label, whenever you pick up a product, it's very important for you to turn it over and look at the label because the label is where we get all of our good information now, nutritional, nutritional facts. So the sodium in this particular product, which has no salt, is 10 milligrams of sodium. Whereas this same corn has 300 milligrams of sodium. So the better choice is a no salt one. If you can't find the no salt one, what you can do is use this corn and rinse it. Pour the liquid off, pour fresh water in it, and rinse it again, and then heat it up. Let's move down to the dairy section of the grocery store. Now we know there are things in the dairy that we don't want you to purchase. Like for example, our Oreo yogurt. Stay away from that. We have a healthier choice, which is our Greek light and fit yogurt. No for this, yes for this. That's what we want you to do. Most children love cheese. They like cheese on everything. So when we look at cheese, we want you to give your children real cheese. This is cheese food. We want you to stay away from this cheese. This is not real cheese. Cheese food, read the, when you look at the nutrition facts, it's a little higher in fat, and the real cheese is further along in the ingredient section of the label. We have other cheeses that are just as good. We have the Colby Jack and we have the mild cheddar, which is real cheese. And that's what we want you to use. Let's talk about milk. We have some examples here of different types of milk, quote unquote, that you'll find in the grocery store. We have soy, we have almond, and we have lactose free. A lot of times when individuals use the soy or the, or the almond milk is because they cannot tolerate uh, regular milk, cow's milk. And when they do, it causes them gastric upsets, which is diarrhea, bloating, uh, just a, a host of things that they cannot tolerate. But there is a better choice, which is lactose-free. Lactose-free has the lactase sugar removed from the milk, which is the primary cause of all the gastric upsets. So lactose-free milk is usually the better choice. It contains more calcium and all the other nutrients that we find or don't find in cow's milk is in our lactose-free milk. The thing I often recommend that you look at when you look at the almond and the salt milk is that you read the ingredients. If you remember from your food label class, the federal government regulates ingredients on our packages. The most ingredient is number one on the ingredient list. The least ingredient is the last on the ingredient list. And a lot of us say, oh, I want natural uh, milk. I don't want all these additives. But when you look at the soy and the almond milk, you'll be surprised with what they're adding to make the milk milk because soy is a bean and almond is a nut. So it has to simulate milk. Calcium is the best thing we can get from our cheeses, our yogurts for our children. So think about that the next time you go to the store and you look at purchasing some type of dairy product, read the nutrition fact label and look at the ingredients. Can anyone tell me the difference between a white egg and a brown egg? I'm waiting. 
A lot of times I get the answer is the brown egg is a healthier egg than the white egg. Believe it or not, there is no difference. The only difference is the type of chicken that lays the egg and also how the chicken is caged. This particular brown egg is caged free. That means the chicken is able to run, roam, anywhere they want to roam. And they lay eggs everywhere. This particular white egg, the chicken is in a cage and the eggs are regulated. So this egg was $2.89 for 12. This egg was $5.49 for 12. So you also need to look at the cost and also what you're going to use the egg for. So in essence, I leave the decision up to you. But if I can buy a extra large egg for $2.89 as opposed to a brown egg that the chicken has been free to roam the property of where they live, you have to look at economics sometimes. The other type of egg that you can purchase is Eglin's Best, which those chickens have been raised for a low cholesterol diet, which their eggs are lower in cholesterol than the regular white egg and the regular brown egg. So for those of you who have cholesterol issues and you like eggs, Eglin's Best is a better choice. All right, now we're going to move on a little bit further into the grocery store. We're going to go to the meat section. And in the meat section, you find chicken, fish, beef, and pork. And so I just have a few examples of uh, some ground beef that I want to point out to you. When we look at ground beef, you have all different types of ground beef. One thing I want to put out there to you is to make sure you look at the type of ground beef you're purchasing. Now I have ground sirloin and I have ground chuck here. The ground sirloin has 90% lean meat and 10% fat. Now if you're planning to make a hamburger for a cookout, this type of ground beef you don't want to use. And the reason I say that is because the hamburger will be very dry. This particular type of uh, ground sirloin, I recommend that you use it in sauces, spaghetti sauce, any type of casserole you might make. It makes a low fat product, but it also makes the product wet enough that it's not so dry. The ground chuck that I have here is 80-20, 80% lean, 20% fat. This makes a better hamburger. And you can also use this in your spaghetti, meat sauces. Just drown, just drain the fat off if, if there's any fat that's left in the, in the skillet. I also have ground turkey, which is usually a better choice. And I'm finding more and more people are using ground turkey for their hamburgers or casseroles that they, that they might make. This is a better choice. It's okay to have ground beef every now and then, but the ground turkey you can have more frequently. How many hot dog eaters do I have out there? This particular hot dog has, for one hot dog, is 180 calories. Think about it. 180 calories for one hot dog. This is a beef hot dog, which the fat in this hot dog is 11 grams. The sodium is 450 milligrams of sodium in one hot dog. So think about the hot dogs. If you're having hot dogs infrequently, one every now and then is okay. But if you're having hot dogs every week or giving your kids hot dogs two or three times a week, you really need to seriously think about limiting the amount of hot dogs that you, you're offering your children. All right, let's move to the fun stuff, ice cream. 
This is a half a cup. Don't kill the messenger. This is a serving of ice cream. So if your kids or you are eating a larger serving than this, you must do the math with the number of calories you're getting from that particular ice cream. So when we look at a pint of ice cream, four people are supposed to eat out of this. The calories in this one is 266 calories for a half a cup of ice cream. So this particular brand is a little higher in fat and we just don't recommend it to be given to our children, especially those of the children who need to lose weight. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We have frozen yogurt. And frozen yogurt comes in all different kinds of flavors. And it gives you the mouth feel of ice cream. And it tastes real good. A half cup serving of this is only 90 calories. So when you look at a, a choice of ice cream, per se, the frozen yogurt is the better choice out of all the choices you see here. I'd like for you to look at the frozen yogurt. All right? Now we're going to move down to the beverages. Our kids tend to like to drink a lot of sodas, which we don't recommend. But we do have alternatives that they can use. But I do want to point a couple things out. The Arizona, 99 cents for the can. I see a lot of people drinking this. What one eight ounce serving? is 100 calories. Three people are supposed to drink out of this can. If you consume this whole can by yourself, you're consuming 300 calories. You already know it's high in sugar. So there's no question about that. So eight ounces, 300 calories. All right, we have the peach lift and tea. This bottle is 16 ounces, and the calories for this bottle is 100 calories. So you're looking at eight ounces, 100 calories, 16 ounces, 100 calories. I'll let you make the choice. We also have all different kinds of, of fruited waters, seltzer waters now. Zero calories. Our uh, all-time favorite Coke and Pepsi. We know this is 150 calories for uh, 12 ounces. We know to stay away from that. Now, we tend to be drinking a lot of coconut water. One thing I want to point out to coconut, about coconut water is you need to read the ingredients and make sure it's 100% coconut water and not coconut water that sugar has been added to it. So be sure to read the ingredient list and make sure it says 100% coconut water. And we all know coconut water is high in electrolytes. It's good for us if we're out in the sun a lot. Um, it's a wonderful beverage, but just make sure it doesn't contain any sugar. There are not a whole lot of foods I t tell people to avoid. I say limit your portion size of it and restrict the frequency of it. But this one food is my pet peeve. Ramen noodles that comes in these little cups and noodles that come in these packages. They are killing us. This particular package has 1,200 milligrams of sodium. This one has 900 milligrams of sodium. And it's no nutritive value in these products. The only thing of value in these products is they're easy to prepare. So when you tell, when you buy these things, your kids put them in the microwave and blah, 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 blah. You know, they have a, a meal. But when we look at it, it is just not good for our children. If you have any of these products in your cover, I suggest that you just throw them away. I know you're looking at me crazy, but these are not good for you or your children. Read the 
Nutrition Fact label and read what's in it, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And I know someone is thinking, what if I don't put the, the flavor packet in the container? I can do that and reduce the sodium. Yeah, you can do it, but the noodles have just as much sodium as that flavor packet. So, to make everyone a lot healthier, make your own noodles. Get some spaghetti noodles and some chicken broth and some leftover chicken that you have in the refrigerator. Chop it up, put your vegetables in it yourself, and you'll have a better tasting product than this. All right, now, let's go to our frozen food. And we have all different types of frozen foods. It's just hours and hours of all types of frozen products. First of all, it's important to read the nutrition fact label on anything you purchase. All right, we're gonna start with this one. This is roast turkey with stuffing and mashed potatoes. The front of the packaging looks beautiful. We think we're getting a whole a wonderful meal. The meal itself is 296 calories, but the sodium is 780. You have to look at your nutrition fact label. But when I look at the ingredient, I told you earlier, the most ingredient is number one, the least ingredient is at the end. The first ingredient on this particular package is mashed potatoes, which tell me there are more mashed potatoes in this container than there is turkey, Stuffing on vegetables. Read your labels. All right, I know some of you have these chicken pot pies. Marie Collender is a, a popular brand of chicken pot pies. But have you had a chance to look at the label or the nutrition facts? This one container is 600 calories. And these pot pies aren't that large. So think about it. 600 calories for this, 296 calories for the, for the turkey and dressing, 750 milligrams for a whole meal, 600 milligrams for one chicken pot pie. And the fat is just through the roof because of the crust. Vegetables are limited because the container isn't that big. So think about the frozen meals that you purchase for your family. They're all normally will be high in sodium. And if you need to be mindful of the sodium that you are taking into your body, you can stay away from frozen foods. All right, as we talk about children, we got to talk about cookies. Everybody loves cookies. So I, I got to a more popular brands. You know, you can go down the cookie aisle and just go crazy because it's just section after section after section of cookies. So I just picked two. All right, Chips Ahoy and Reduced Fat Mellow Wafers. When I look at the Nutrition Fact label, three cookies, uh, 160 calories. When I look at the nutrition fact label, the Nella wafers, eight wafers are 120. And the fat is 1.5. The fat in our Chips Ahoy is five. So I let you figure out the better choice. Cheaper too. Think about it. I have a sweet tooth. Yeah, I'm a dietitian. I like desserts. But I was shocked when, when I read the nutrition fact label on uh, on the red velvet cheesecake. Now, first of all, the front is very deceiving because the slice isn't as big as what you're looking at here. So let's get that straight right away. The calories in one slice it's probably about that big. It's 640 calories. That just blew my mind. 66% of the calories is coming from fat. So 
if you ever eat at Cheesecake Factory and you order any of their cheesecakes, you already are gonna know unless it's a sugar-free one or low-fat ones, they're gonna be high in calories. So this is where you need to make a decision. Well, I'm gonna eat all that bread that they put on the table, or I'm gonna eat half of my meal and eat half of the cheesecake. Because you can't be, the cheesecake is for its taste, but it's not good for our calories, it's not good for our heart if we eat the whole thing. 640 calories in one little slip. Whew, I was disappointed. Okay, so let's look at sweet potato pie. This is not an eight inch, it might be an eight inch 10 that the pie comes in, it might be seven inches. The sliver of pie is not that big, and you're looking at 450 calories in one slice of pie. Look at the nutrition fact label, look at the ingredients, and determine if this is what you really want. For those of you who make your own sweet potato pie, I encourage you to look at the ingredients and see what Patty LaBelle puts in her pie. You'll be surprised. All right. Now, we're gonna move to our last section, which is the cereal. Now, when I looked at that cereal aisle, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's cereal as far as you can see. And I brought some examples of some of the ones that you will find. I also intermittently uh, brought the healthier choices of the ones that I would recommend. I'm gonna start with granola. I am the type of person that like to put granola on my, my yogurt in the morning. So when I looked at the granolas, I'm like, okay, this for a two-thirds of a cup serving is 270 calories. Well, my yogurt is only 90, and I'm gonna put 270 calories of granola on top of it. That defeats the whole purpose for me. So I looked at um, Kashi. I like nuts. You might not like nuts. Your kids might be allergic to nuts, but they have other brands of Kashi. Three-fourths of a cup of this is only 200 calories. And the fat on this is 6%. And the fat on my regular granola is 17%. So when you look at these two choices, this is the better choice because I can get more of it with less calories. Nutrition fact labels are very important, and that is how you determine what is going on with the product. Look at those labels. You'll be pleasantly surprised what you'll find. All right, when we look at oatmeal, the ones in these little containers tend to have more calories and more sugar. So I tend to tell uh, individuals to avoid uh, the pretty ones. Yeah, they're convenient because you just put them in the microwave with milk or water. You can do the same thing with regular oatmeal. They have the directions on the packaging where you use milk or water to make your oatmeal. I highly recommend using milk because you give your oatmeal more nutritive value if you use milk. So think about that. And milk I recommend is 1% to your fat-free milk. All right, we know the Cheerio breads are, are good for us because they're made with whole grains. Even a honey nut isn't that bad. So I usually recommend the families, uh, the plain Cheerios or the honey nut Cheerios for children. The ones I don't recommend are the chocolate ones, the Fruit Loop flavored ones. They've come out with all different kinds of flavors of Cheerios now. Stick with the plain brands. You'll find that they're low in calories and they're better for you. Now, next thing I recommend you do is use Fiber One. Now with children, sometimes it's a little difficult to get them to just to eat 
the plain fiber one cereal. So what I usually recommend is that you mix it with their favorite cereal. So let's say you take Honey Nut Cheerios and mix fiber one with it. One, one half cup of this will give you your daily supply of fiber. So mixing it with your, your Cheerio brand is an excellent choice. The next healthier choice of cereal is Crackling brand. It's giving us a water soluble fiber, which is good for our heart and doesn't taste that bad. The other cereals that I have on the table are usually the ones I don't recommend. Rice Krispies, look what you get from it, nothing. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, very popular with children. Frosted Flakes, do I need to say anything more? These two cereals are high in sugar, but we don't get a whole lot from our Rice Krispies. So in essence, when you look at all the, the foods and produce and snacks that we've discussed today, it's just really important for you as a consumer to make sure you read the nutrition fact label and the ingredients. The federal government regulates those two items. The government does not regulate what they put on the front of packaging. So packaging labels on the front can be very deceptive. Turn that product over and read the nutrition fact label and the ingredients. That's where you get the true picture of what you're going to consume. Now, from this point on, what I want you to do is to go forth and conquer, read your labels, and let's shop healthy in this time of turmoil that we're in. I can't wait to get you in a real grocery store and we can go over a few more items. But once again, I want to thank you for viewing this video. Ebony Nutrition and all the partners that participate with us appreciate your time. Thanks again.